Good morning. It is great to have all of you here and to have a uh, packed house here at the University of Alabama. We appreciate you being here with us on such an important and exciting day in the life of not only our baseball program, but our athletic program as well. We have a number of individuals in the room that I, I know are gonna be acknowledged over the course of the day, but without further ado, please welcome the Director of Athletics at the University of Alabama, Greg Byrne. Good morning, how we doing? Good. Great day for the University of Alabama. Um, I'm going to introduce a few folks and thank a few folks uh, to get started. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, thank President Bell, who could not be here today, uh, for all of his support through this search and for our department overall. Uh, Chancellor Hayes, thank you very much for, for your support as well. I, I, I will uh, just tell you after I introduce the, the trustees as well uh, here in a second, but. We've got incredible support from our trustees, uh, from the chancellor's office, from the system office, from, from the president's office, and that's what makes this university so special. Um, I'd like to uh, thank President Pro Tem of the Board of Trustees, Karen Brooks, for being here as well. And then also, uh, Judge, thanks very much for being here as well. Always Judge England, always there supporting us as well. Um, Fest St. John. Uh, who's our athletic liaison for our Board of Trustees, and, and Trustee Phelps as well. They were both very instrumental and, and helpful through this process as well. I talked to a, a number of folks as we uh, went through this process. Um, I'd like to name a few of those. David Magadan, who obviously needs no introduction. Coach Wells was very helpful throughout. Uh, local coach uh, Bobby Sproul uh, gave me some great insight as we went through this process. Alan Dunn was wonderful, uh, Dr. Jeff Lobenthal, and then talked to a lot of people through professional and the college ranks as well through the process. Uh, also, I'd like to also, I think J.C. Rinelli's here. Uh, J.C. Was, was wonderful in his support, the president of the A-Club, overall A-Club for all of our former student athletes, but he happens to be a baseball alum as well, so J.C. really appreciate your, your help through this time as well. So, as we went through the process, and we, we talked, as I mentioned, we talked to a lot of different people. Uh, as we were identifying potential candidates, uh, Brad Bohannon's name continued to surface. Uh, I knew Brad briefly from about 12, 13 years ago when he joined John Cohen's staff at the University of Kentucky. Uh, I, I know that uh, we talked, when, when I hired John over at Mississippi State, uh, Coach Cohen and I talked about uh, uh, Brad and trying to get him to Starkville, but he, uh, for some reason, wanted to stay in, in Lexington where he was able to meet his future wife, Kim. And uh, that worked out very well for both of you. And, uh, and obviously, we're, we're thrilled to have Kim join us as well. And, and Kim's mom, Janet, took the time to be here as well. And I understand Brad's got some of his old college buds here too. So I'm, I, I'm sure you get a chance to meet all of them as well. So we appreciate you, you making the trip. During the search as well, um, I also want to tell you that uh, John Plott was helpful for us as well through it. And I just appreciate John for his, for his help through the, through the search as well. So when you're looking at college baseball coaches, one of the things I mentioned a week ago was I think the best coaches are smart. And, uh, and Brad certainly fits that, uh, that bill. Uh, happens to have his uh, MBA from Wake Forest. When he uh, was, got done with his MBA, he actually went out to Intel in Portland, Oregon and worked in finance for him. And it shows you the, uh, the, the, the academic accolades and the ability that he has. And so when you have those abilities, your ability to translate that to coaching and developing young men, communicating with young men and young women too, if you're on the female side of one of our teams, uh, I think that's a strength. Coach Bohannon certainly fits that. So we sat down on Monday in our home in Tuscaloosa, Regina and I uh, invited him in and we surprised, I don't think Kim was expecting to have to come in and say hi, but we surprised her and she did a great job as well. And what I thought it was gonna be was gonna be about an hour conversation, kind of me getting reintroduced to, to Brad and then talking a little bit about the program. And about three and a half hours later, he left my house. And as we went through this, and he had a presentation about what he would do with Alabama baseball if he was fortunate enough to be our coach. And I could tell right away, this is where he wanted to be. He wanted to work with our current team, which guys, I appreciate y'all being here. Um, he wanted to work with our former alums and baseball players and the importance of that. He wanted to work with our fan base and our community. He had a really solid academic and compliance plan. He also had an incredible vision for recruiting. And as we went through this, 
we spent time looking at our past rosters of our baseball teams that went to Omaha, went to regionals, and looked up the, at the makeup of those teams. And it wasn't one size fits all, but I can tell you there were a few things that had to be there. You had to recruit the state of Alabama, and Coach Bohannon fits that extremely well. You have to recruit in the southeast. He does that as well. You have to have a solid plan put together from a staffing standpoint. And he had great ideas and thoughts about the direction for that as well. On top of that, you look at those teams in the past, a lot of them had players from the west, from the northeast, from the midwest. You have to recruit nationally here at Alabama. And one of our strengths of our university is our brand, of who we are. Having Avery here today, he, he, that's, that's why he's out there spreading the Alabama gospel across the country. Same thing with Christy, and we appreciate both of you being there. That, that's a selling point for us. And to be able to incorporate that into our recruiting plan gives us a chance and separates us from our competition, and he had a solid plan for that. During his time at the University of Kentucky and his years coaching in this state, he recruited young men from 25 different states. And so he had a net that cast nationwide and even into Canada, and that plan as well with, with the Canadian national team. So one of the other things that we did, and the last thing I'll talk about before I bring Coach Bohannon up here, we, uh, Matt Sell from our, our compliance department, I talk, taught him a little trick in, in coaching hires. We, uh, I had Matt block his number so he didn't know where, or they didn't know who was calling, but he called former players that played for Coach Bohannon. And I wanted him to call players that played a lot. I wanted him to call players, former student athletes that played a little bit off and on, and then we wanted him to call some guys that never got off the bench. And when you go and make those calls, you talk about them. How does he treat the student athletes? How to talk about the recruiting process, talk about academics and compliance, talk about baseball and the importance of uh, coaching and developing. On top of that, the last question you always ask is, if you had to do it all over again, would you want to play for Coach Bohannon? And without a doubt, 100% of the young men that he talked to said, I absolutely would play for Coach Bohannon again. And I knew with that, that was the kind of coach that we wanted here at the University of Alabama, checking all those boxes that I mentioned earlier, but most importantly, checking that box that a, a coach that guys wanted to play for. So please give a great Alabama welcome to our new head baseball, baseball coach, Brad Bohannon. I have been waiting all weekend to get up here and say, roll tide, baby. <laughs> roll tide. You know, when you get into college coaching, it's a tough road. You know, it's so hard to get your first job. You move around like crazy. You live week to week. You work in baseball camps for peanuts. And when you're doing that, you're, at times you question what you're doing. And you also, you have these dreams to one day lead your own program and, and to coach in this league. And, for that dream to come true for me today is just, is just such a blessing. Thank you. Um, there's so many people to thank, and I'll, I'll try to be brief, but first, uh, Greg, uh, President Bell, the Board of Trustees, Finest Gaston, everyone involved in the hiring process, I just I can't thank you enough for believing in me, giving me this opportunity, um, believing in my vision for the program. Um, I have a recruiting background, and my biggest recruit by far is my wife, Kim. Um, <laughs> You can't do this job without marrying the right person. And uh, anybody that works in college athletics knows the, uh, the pace that we work at, the time and energy, the passion that we put into what we do. And I got that one right. Thank you. Um, George Greer gave me my first coaching opportunity at Wake Forest in 2001. And he allowed me to attend the Wake Forest MBA program full time. And not only that, he let me coach, and I made so many mistakes, but that's the best way to learn is to make mistakes. So I'm so thankful to Coach Greer for giving me my first job. I probably caught my biz biggest break in 2004 when John Cohen brought me on staff to Kentucky. He saw something in me at that point in time that I'm not sure that I saw in myself. Uh, we had a tremendous run there. John has progressed from a hard-driving boss that made me uncomfortable and pushed me to my limits 
to a mentor and, and now a friend. And John, I love you and thank you for everything that you've done for me. Um, I was with Gary Henderson for 12 years. And anybody that's involved in this league in any way, shape, or form, being in the SEC, those are like dog years. So 12 years is just an eternity. And Gary is one of the best baseball coaches in the game. I think going forward, you, you will see a larger uh, Gary Henderson imprint in the way that I run the program and run practice than anybody I've been involved with. Uh, and I thank Gary for the opportunities and the influence he's had on me. Um, the last 20 months I've been with Butch Thompson, and, and Butch is as fine of a man as there is in college athletics. And he's a brother. And probably the biggest thing I've taken from Butch is you can do this job and be a good person and love the kids. And you know, deep down they want to be pushed and uh, you can do it and, and still love them. And uh, I thank Butch for the opportunity at Auburn. And I thank him for, for being such a close friend. Um, there's two pro scouts among many that are, are great friends, but Sean Gibbs and Tim O'Neill are two of my best friends and have just had a tremendous impact on the way that I evaluate players. Uh, and I would not have had the recruiting success that I've had without their guidance and the knowledge I've taken from them over the years. And really, most of all, I'm just so thankful to all of my former players. I mean, everybody that I've ever recruited and coached. You know, in the 14 years I've been in the league, I've not gotten a hit, I've not made a pitch. You know, it's really all about the kids. They're the ones making the plays. And I'm just thankful to each and every one of them for buying into me and what I was selling at the time and for giving me everything they had for, while playing for me. Um, I really think that anything can be achieved here at the University of Alabama. My goal going forward is to make Alabama the absolute best place to play college baseball in the country. And we have everything we need in place to make that happen. We're going to do that by being a player's first program. Everything that we do as a coaching staff is going to be about making sure that our kids get their college degree, about helping them to grow as men and hopefully one day be great husbands and fathers, and also to make, help them become the best version of themselves as a baseball player. I can't wait to start recruiting. I can't wait to get kids on campus this week and show them our great place. And I can't wait to look them in the eye and look their parents in the eye and say, hey, if you come to Alabama, you can win an SEC championship because that's been done 14 times before. You can be a first team All-American because we've had 15 of those. We can go to the College World Series because it's been done five times. You can be a first round draft pick. It's all been done here before. I mean, this is a program that has won 2,500 games. I mean, that's just um, unbelievable. And a big part of that are because of the great coaches that have been here before. Joe Sewell, Barry Schellenberger, Jim Wells, and Mitch Gaspard and staff have done a, a great job of creating tradition that needs to be a competitive advantage for us going forward. I've coached in this league for 14 years. And you can't survive in this league, much less thrive, if you have a, a lot of shortcomings. You're really forced to figure things out. I finished first in the league and I finished last and I'm very clear on the difference and it all starts on the mound. <laughs> Early on we're going to coach to our personnel. I think it's important initially for me and my coaching staff to adjust to our players. Over time we're going to strive to be balanced. I love three run home runs but you also need to be able to score at times without getting a hit because it's tough, tough to string together five hits on a Friday night in our league when you're facing a future big leaguer. We have an extremely impressive list of alumni, and I'm so excited to get to know all of them that I can. Not only are you going to be welcome here, but we want you here. And again, we have a tremendous alumni base, and we want you all to be involved, and we want that to be a competitive advantage for us. Uh, having recruited the area heavily for the last 20 months, I've developed so many strong relationships. There's just an outstanding group of high school, junior college, and travel baseball coaches in the area. Guys, you're going to be hearing from us often. And we're going to recruit from the inside out. I would love to have a team full of Alabama kids. I would love that. But you know what? We have a national brand. We have an amazing place, and we can get kids from anywhere, and we'll do that. There's a lot of work to be done. We all know that. And there's no shortcuts. I don't have any magic dust. Uh, but I can't wait to roll my sleeves up and get to work. Uh, again, thank you. Um, I owe everyone involved just a tremendous amount of gratitude for providing me this opportunity. It's not something that uh, I take lightly. 
and Roll Tide. <laughs> but I'd love to open it up for questions. Go ahead, raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, we know you might have been busy this weekend. Was there? Uh, did you think about staying with the team uh, and, and postponing this press conference? Well, I am going to get back tonight for for the game. So, um, you know, when when you coach, the the things that we do together, the relationships that you build are stronger than than any jersey that you wear. Uh, rest assured, going forward, that there will be no doubt where my loyalty lies. Uh, but when I get back to Tallahassee tonight, I'm going to give that team everything I have to win that ball game. Brad, as far as the staff goes, have you made any decisions of who will be on your staff? And is it important for you to get somebody that has head coaching experience in the SEC on your staff? You know, the last 72 hours, it has been amazing at the outpouring of support from the Alabama fan base, the, the talent pool of the coaches that have re reached out. Um, I think it's really important to get coaches that are really good at recruiting and really good at coaching. And at Alabama, you can get guys that are really good at both. Um, I'll jump more into the staff stuff this next week and a half, and I can just assure you that we'll put together an all-star coaching staff. What was the timeline for when you were able to leave Tallahassee last night, get here, and what's the plan time-wise to get uh, to leave here and get back? It's all been such a blur. We got off the field last night after midnight. Uh, I don't know what time I got here. It was late. Um, and, you know, I haven't seen Kim in like two weeks, so it's not like I just walked in and went to sleep. We had so much to catch up on, and I was really excited. So. Uh, it was a quick turnaround, and you know we're going to knock some stuff out today, and then you know I'll get back down, down there. But I, yeah, I'm short on sleep, but not short on adrenaline. Uh, Greg was talking about you know your your first career was obviously in Intel and finance. I guess your decision to, to decide to go into baseball. What what was behind that, and why was it important to to take that step? But I think you weren't even making much as an intern with. Uh, or a volunteer assistant uh, with Cohen, right? Yeah, even though I'm book smart, my mom at that point in time was really questioning my decision making and uh, mental capabilities. Um, you know, I, I wanted to coach after I left Wake Forest, but it's just so competitive, you know, and you, you know, I blew, grew up in a blue collar family and I was pretty, had to support myself at that point in time and I, I had student loans and the math just wasn't working, you know, the, the student loans and the coaching opportunities that I could get at that point in time. So I kind of, you know, I did the corporate finance thing to kind of out of necessity and I caught a huge break getting connected with Gary Henderson who got me connected with John and, you know, so it was never that I doubted coaching. It's just, you know, life doesn't go always go the way you plan it and you just got to roll with it. What did, <clears throat> sorry. what did you learn from this Alabama team during that three game series and earlier earlier than the season you know that weekend I thought the team really competed well for that particular weekend and and I there's some good pieces um, you know we when I was talking to the the kids you know I think I would gosh it felt like we played 70 innings in about a 36 hour period so um, when you're dealing with college kids and then you're in this league there's so many ups and downs and it's all about when you catch teams and you know if you you see any team and see their best baseball you have one opinion and you catch them on a weekend where they play their worst you you have another so um you know there's some good pieces in place and i thought the kids competed pretty well and i'm excited to build on that brad if auburn does win tonight have you and butch discussed what you'll do if they advance to a super regional well, I'm going to get through tonight, and let me say this, Jay Jacobs, Butch Thompson, Greg Byrne, everybody involved has just been amazing. Um, so we'll get through the game tonight, and we'll sit down and, and visit with all of that, but I'm, I'm not ready to make a decision or announcement on that. The presentation that you made, I, I'm going to guess that you've been thinking about being a head coach for, for quite a while. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what was involved with that and what you wanted to emphasize? Yeah, there was a lot. And I tried to touch on some of those in, in the, the speech that I gave, but 
at the core, it's all about recruiting at the highest level because good players make good coaches. Uh, you also have to coach at the highest level because everybody in the SEC can coach, and you have to have a tremendous team culture. And those are the three things that are going to be the basis of our program. And, you know, we want to be involved in the community, and we will be. We want to get our alumni involved. There's a lot that goes into having a, a successful championship level program but at the core we got to recruit we got to coach and we got to have a great team culture back in the back there. you mentioned talking to alan don and, and specifically jim wells obviously there's some challenges with the alabama job what did jim say to you about about approaching this job i really followed up with coach wells you know after i had the job and we had a long conversation. I really were just trying to get to know each other. You know, we overlapped in the league a little bit. Um, and I'm glad you brought this up. I, I'm not going to talk about the challenges. I'm going to talk about what we have. And we have a lot. Okay. We, we have one of the best ballparks in the country. We have one of the best college experiences in the country. We get to take kids to Alabama football games. The SEC experience is second to none. So we have a lot to sell. And we're going to talk about what we do have and what not what we don't have. Coach Bohannon, I just wanted to ask, I know your strength is recruiting and evaluating. You've got a lot of good players uh, here today watching the press conference and, of course, a lot of uh, guys that have already been signed. When you what, Talk about the decisions that you're going to have to make as far as the roster going into next year. I know you'll start evaluating that soon. Yeah, you know, I'll get into that, that stuff the next week or two. Uh, I think the two most important things are getting a staff in place and then also starting to work through the roster stuff. And, you know, I'll gather as much information as I can. I'll, I'll be fair and honest and communicate. And at the end of the day, though, there's NCAA rules that are way above me that you have to deal with as far as you know numbers. And you know, we'll work through all of that stuff. Greg talked about your recruiting prowess. You can obviously joke with your wife. But uh, what makes you a good recruiter in your eyes? You know, I, I think you would probably have to ask the folks I've recruited to, to get the best answer. Again, I, I don't think it's a magic formula. I think you just have to work really hard and you have to be a good listener and you have to care. And, you know, at the end of the day, kids want to play for coaches who they think can help them develop as people and players and people that they have a connection with. And if you really want to connect with people, you have to communicate and you have to work at it, whether it's your marriage or coaching or whatever aspect of life. So those are the things that I always try to focus on. I, I really do want to get to know the kids because um, it's, this job is all about getting the right people on the front end. All right, thank you. Roll tie. You may never have said roll tie before today, but you did it really well. <laughs> nice job. I've been practicing. Good job. In my room. <laughs> Quietly. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here. Uh, I believe uh, for the press, you were told earlier that um, Greg Byrne will be available to answer some questions in just a moment. But at this point, it does conclude our press conference. Thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, and once again, roll tide.